I'm going to show you how am I scrapping the MLS information of each property into my Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to log in to my MLS. And I'm going to go to metrics. And I'm going to go to history. And the way it's designed, it's not a business opportunity. And the folio number. So the only thing I need to do right now is enter the login and password for the MLS and click OK. So if I click OK right now, you're going to see that the folios in the column J right now are going to be uh, exported into the MLS. They're going to be searching for an history and it's going to start downloading the report. So the only thing I need to do is click OK here and that's going to start running by itself. Not touching anything. And now everything is being filled by itself. The way it works is it takes the folio from each property, okay, and it goes and it search for the history of that property. And then it goes and it downloads the latest report, meaning that when was that property last listed? The la last time it was listed, it's going to download the report and it's going to uh, make a link on my computer so I can actually uh, access that report uh, offline. So I don't need to look at the internet. I can be fast, I can be efficient. I don't need to change browsers. I just need to think about my bid. I need to think about uh, what is it worth it for? What is it worth? How much this property is really worth? And not make a mistake with my formula. And for that, I really have to know the most information I can on each property. Right? The most information I can is going to help me turn that property into profit quickly and not make a mistake. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. What, what I'm doing right now, as you can see, uh, it searches by each folio. It goes, it downloads the last uh, report. It puts the information on my Excel spreadsheet. And um, if I want to call the realtor that was uh, on that listing, um, I just give him a call and say, hey, what's going on with that property? I see it's going up for auction. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the condition of that property? Can you tell me if it's vacant? Uh, can you tell me if there is any um, major issue I uh, should know of? Uh, maybe the owner is still in the property or maybe he wants to uh, uh, maybe sell that property. You never know. If you call somebody a day before the auction, you can maybe all sell that property if there is enough equity. And I've been doing it also. So that kind of that kind of due diligence uh, give you inside information because you're talking to somebody who, who was involved with that property, who knows, who has uh, information about that property. They might not be the listing agent anymore, but they might give you information that can make you ten or $30,000 easily. So just doing your due diligence, right, on each property and knowing its condition, knowing its potential, knowing its value, that's going to make, and knowing the liens, that are existed on that property, right? Which you can always find, always find out by doing a title search and searching the public records. I'm gonna show you as well how to do a title search. Once you know all these kind of things, all right, that's gonna be so easy for you to come up with a number. Because if you know, if you know as a matter of effect that the property is worth at least $200,000 and you can get it for 140 and there is only $5,000 owes in leads and stuff like that, so you're having more than $50,000 worth of equity. You're going to put a bid for one forty-five, right? You know the condition. You know it's vacant. You know title is good. You got some information from the realtor. You put your bid. You might not get it, but if you put 10 bids with this uh, kind of uh, way of uh, doing due diligence, trust me, you're going to start getting properties and you're going to start making money. You might not get everything. You might be have to work for that for one day, for two days, for a week, maybe for a month to place your bids. But eventually, you're going to get a property and you're going to get it uh, in a low risk and you're going to make profit and you're going to use the information that you have and you're not going to get carried away with other bidders. Never get carried away with other bidders. Don't even care what they do or what they bid. You have to kind of understand what's your maximum bid 
and go with it. Don't get carried away. Don't get emotional. Okay? Don't look at what other people do. You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta bring your value to the table. You don't follow other videos. You just uh, overbid them when you know something they don't know. And that's what I do. When I know there is a property that it's uh, in great condition, uh, that uh, it's vacant, that uh, it was uh, well taken care of and the HOA is even paid. Trust me, I'm gonna place a bid. My first bid is gonna be my highest bid. I'm not gonna play games, right? If the property is worth 150 and I know I can, uh, I know my top is bid is 110 or 115 if I really like it. I'm gonna put 115 and I'll stop here, right? I'm gonna stop here. I'm not gonna, not gonna get carried with emotions. Why? Because there are so many other properties that are coming every single day to the auction, to the off market, and you wanna be eligible. You wanna have capacity to buy and you wanna replicate your success. You wanna minimize your risk. Once you make some deals, yes, you can even buy for 15% equity or 20% equity. That's fine. As long as you can move your properties very, very fast and you have a system in place and you have who you can sell it to, then you're fine. It's no problem. But first of all, if you're just starting, if you are trying not to make a mistake, which is the most important thing, you've got to be very, very conservative with your bids and you've got to be very, very comprehensive with your due diligence. And... The step I'm showing you right now can help anybody, can help people who bid the auction, people who are doing all selling, uh, people who buy properties uh, directly from homeowners and call them. This can help you a lot because that tells you uh, all the information that you need on multiple properties, not on one property, right? We are not shopping for one property. We want to create a business. We want to buy properties every single day. We want to sell properties every single day. We want to make deals every single day. We want to make a business. Right? You gotta have tools to help you run your business. If you have a business, you must have an email address, right? Or you must have a CRM nowadays if you have a business. Or you must have some processes in your business, right? You must tell your employees what they should do every single day, when, and who they should report to. Everything is uh, artificial intelligence, I call it this way, okay? In computers, but in reality, people do it in their lives, okay? They work by processes, they work by input and output, and for every business, you gotta have a tool that helps you uh, get an advantage over your competition, okay? If you have a business. If you wanna replicate your success, you gotta think about it as a business. It's not an investment, it's a business, because you have to invest not just in the tools that you, that you implement, you gotta invest in yourself. I can give you all the tools that I have, but the only question is, what are you going to do with that? If you're, gonna know, if you're not going to invest in your knowledge, if you're not going to understand what each point of data means and how you can take advantage of that, so what's the point of having data to begin with? And I personally, let me tell you, to make all this happen for me, I had to dig and dig and dig and dig. And what I did uh, before I go into sleep is actually reading foreclosure complaints and uh, all kind of uh, um, cases and statues, okay? So I can get an advantage over my competition so I can know more information so I know which sources are most reliable. And that's what I did in order to go ahead and go to the auction and, you know, just bid for cash, all the money I've had back in the time. And I, for me to lose and to um, lose my money and to not get back to real estate again uh, when I first started in 2009 could, could be a disaster for me. Could have been a disaster for me. So the fact that I actually uh, spent days and nights uh, and maybe 300 title searches a day just to understand what home ownership means, what liens means, what priority of liens means, and what information I need in order to buy properties cheaper than anybody else. I had to spend a lot of time, a lot of time with myself, understanding the processes and studying. And, and that's what I'm trying to help other people do as well. I'm trying to focus you guys, right, in how to get advantage over your competition. Uh, yes, I can teach you uh, uh, general terms in real estate, uh, such as how to all sell, how to sign a contract, and how to do a lot of things. 
right? I can do that. But the idea is, is to understand the functions of how things work, like all selling, contracts, assignments, data, and everything else, but automate it. So automation is going to be key. And investing in yourself is going to be a huge key because you got to understand what data you're looking at, okay, and how it can really help you uh, create business. All right, so I'm going to let this report right, uh, that you're showing you on my computer right now just run, okay? I'm running it for about 50 properties. It's been running for maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I don't know how long it's been here. Um, but the idea here, I'm going to show you afterward how it looks like. And uh, right now what I'm doing, just to, um, uh, just to explain what I'm doing, I'm actually doing comps for about 50 properties. And it's only been like 10 or 15 minutes here. And once it's done, I'm going to show you exactly the reports we are getting and what kind of uh, uh, advantage it gives us uh, when we participate in the auction. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm coming up, up to after this uh, screen is done. Okay, so the auction is still running. We still have three pages. I just finished running the comps reports. Okay, if you look at the Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to show you right now. Um, you see I have four reports generated for each property. So I have the MLS information, I have pictures, and I have two types of comps for each of those properties that I'm just looking at the auction and I want to place my bid on. So if I click here, you're going to get the last listing, basically. As you can see it's a single family. It's on pending, it's in pending sale, so you know the status. Um, you know the description. Five bedroom, two and a half bathrooms with uh, square footage, etc. And you can see everything that you want to know about this property, basically. Even better than anything else. Somebody already did the work for you. So if you can if you can look at, at comps and you can look at the description of the property, you can kind of understand whether if it's attractive or not attractive, whether if it's priced correctly and it's not priced correctly. And even if you're not sure, why don't you just go ahead and uh, give this um, individual uh, a call uh, to the listing agent and say, you know, I'm uh, looking to buy this property and uh, if you can give me some more information about it. Uh, why is it still going on to the auction? And, you know, some can get some information that's going to help you identify the opportunity here. So you got the MLS last listing here. And I can see it was on pending sale, 389. So my job would be right now to know, uh, number one, what was the real number on the contract? Number two, is it still going? Is the buyer still interested to buy it? And number three, why the seller was not able to convey title. Maybe the, the judgment was too high and the bank didn't settle with him, or there was some problem there that could not allow the seller to convey title. And that's something you need to know about when you uh, buy the, the auction, because that's gonna help you understand how fast you can move the property. So basically, that's a, one piece of information that we received from the uh, automation that we did. And I'm gonna go to the next one, which is pictures. Uh, that basically gives you uh, pictures of the property when it was listed. You see you have the same address over here. It's the MLS information. Uh, you can see the kitchen, the bathrooms, and everything that you want to look at. Uh, and you can look it over here. And another report that is also being generated is um, the MLS report. All right, so you have the IMAP report, and uh, and here is another comp here that is generated from the property appraisal report, basically. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how I can do it manually as well right now in a second, but I want you to understand that I'm taking two different uh, type of reports from two different type of sources. One source is from the MLS, okay, using IMAP. And another source is for my own property appraisal in my county. Okay, they have they allow to they have some tool that allows you to do reports, and I'm also taking that uh, um, comps reports from them. 
As you can see, this is a subject property here in red, and uh, those are the properties that were sold uh, within the same year because that's the criteria that I predefined for my report. Just think about this process alone, okay, that I'm showing you right now. I'm showing you uh, four different reports that were generated for about 50 properties, okay, within less than half an hour. So most realtors and most investors' jobs uh, is to do the reports and to do the comps and to understand value and to kind of have all the things aligned in their due diligence, okay, in one kind of a folder where they can actually um, make the basis decisions upon those reports, okay, and not make mistakes, not misinformation that can be, um, that can kill your deal, basically. That's very, very important.